Hey y'all, today we're gonna be reviewing Garmin's brand new flagship watch. This is the Garmin D2 Mach 1. The D2 Mach 1 is Garmin's premier watch. The case here is actually made of titanium, so it's a super strong, super light metal, and it's got a sapphire lens, so you really don't have to worry about scratching your lens like you do with some other smartwatches. Uh, you can get a band that's either in an Italian leather or you can get it in a titanium band. Uh, all these watches also come with a silicone band, so if you want to do sports and stuff like that, uh, you also have that feature, much like you do with other uh, smart watches. It's got an MOLED display, which is really nice, uh, as well as the standard uh, heart rate monitor, pulse oximeter, and things like that. Uh, other advantages of this on here is, like I said, it's titanium, it's sapphire, it's got a multi-band GPS, uh, and then it is, uh, it's waterproof all the way down to 100 meters, which is a, a really nice feature. Uh, not that you're gonna be going diving with the watch, but uh, if you do find yourself swimming or whatever, you don't have to worry about any water getting into it. This watch has a very big display on it, and it has a couple different ways that you can use it. You can either integrate with it by touching the screen, uh, swiping up and down, pressing and holding, or it has five different buttons on the exterior of the case where you can use to navigate that as well if you prefer. One thing about this watch that has that's pretty incredible, unlike the other ones, is as you can tell, it's a little bit bigger of a watch, uh, but with that, they've added a much, much bigger battery. So uh, on the D2 Air X10, they advertise around seven days battery life, and all that really depends on how much you're using the GPS, obviously. This one, I don't know the exact specs as far as how much much bigger the battery is, but it seems as if the battery lasts about twice as long. If you have battery saver enabled, then the watch will last up to 17 days. Uh, as it is right now though, running the features as I have it set up, it's projected to last for 10 full days, which is an incredible amount of time for a smartwatch. It's really nice to be able to track everything you want to track and not have to worry about charging it every single night like you do with other smartwatches. Uh, as far as other uh, features on this watch, so I really like this front display. It's got a cool like to topographic map on it. Uh, it actually shows your favorite uh, airport. If I click here on the blue button, I can actually select my favorite airport. And what it brings up is it brings up a really cool uh, actual moving map. So unlike uh, the D2 Air X10, where you don't have this moving map, there's a true moving map with uh, waypoints, runways, and you can tap and hold on different runways, and it'll bring up information on those different runways, or you can uh, add waypoints. And another cool feature about this watch is you can take, uh, you can build a flight plan in here or build it somewhere else, and you can transfer it to your phone. You can transfer it from your home. If you have the appropriate Garmin avionics in your airplane, you can transfer it from your phone directly to the Garmin avionics, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, other features about it is you can set your favorite home airport. Once you set your favorite home airport, now all the data from the current weather reports pop up on that watch. So if you uh, tap here, you can see that, all right, runway 17 at VBT right now, winds are 100, 10 knots, and it actually shows the primary runway that you would be flying down on that and the crosswind component that goes on that. And if you tap and hold on it, now it'll actually show you which runway uh, is available and what the direct crosswinds are just very quick at one touch of a button. Other aspects, if uh, here, if you want to get the METAR, you just tap KVBT, and then here it pops up the METAR. You can see the winds, the visibility, uh, when the METAR was most recently updated and all that information. Another feature that this watch has on it that the other ones haven't had in the past is uh, you have uh, four other uh, sections you can tap up here. So really quickly, if you wanna tap on the altimeter, you just tap the altimeter and then you see a true altimeter that pops up. Uh, and it has what looks to be a little bit of an of a ADI or a, a attitude directional indicator. What it does is it pulls the most recent altimeter from whatever the METAR is from the closest airport that you're at and it puts that into your altimeter. So right now the closest altimeter is 3025. If you wanna change that, you can actually go in and either select it to pull from the most current METAR, or you can manually type in whatever altimeter you want if you want to see what a standard altimeter would be with a standard altimeter or something like that. Uh, another cool feature about this is that if you just swipe up on the watch, uh, you can see the current pressure, you can see the current temperature, uh, and it'll also give you your current density altitude, which is great. Uh, not a huge issue if you're flying uh, somewhere that's a lower altitude, but if you find yourself in uh, Santa Fe, for example, where I was at last week, uh, knowing the density altitude before taking off can be really important to know the performance of your aircraft uh, prior to taking off. Another cool feature of this is you can get the UTC time. So if you look in the screen here up in the top right, uh, it actually shows what time it is in Zulu, which is, uh, which is a great time if you're trying to compare uh, where you're at now versus when the METAR, TAF, or the weather reports are saying that it's gonna get worse. Oftentimes that's in Zulu. So being able to have a quick access to that is really, really nice. If I tap on the weather here, once again, we have that METAR, but one really cool feature of this is this graphical meteogram that you don't have, that I've never seen on a watch before. So if you tap on the meteogram here, you can see it'll show you your sky coverage and your probability of precipitation. You swipe up, you can see winds and temperature and dew point spread throughout the day. 
you can actually swipe right and follow it all the way up as far as the forecast goes. It's actually a pretty incredible way to get a graphical depiction of what the weather is going to be like uh, for the next 24 to 48 hours. If you want to get, dig into the weather report a little bit more, you can actually go into the uh, the text version of the MOS and you can get all the detail for the next, uh, I mean, there's 20 pages here that you can go through and see the exact detail of what's going to happen hour by hour or as the MOS is uh, forecasting time in the future. So really a fantastic way to see what the weather is going to be like, uh, which is great because sometimes you don't have uh, your app with you, your Garmin Pilot or your Four Flight or whatever, you don't have that as easily accessible. And so uh, just being able to kind of swipe, swipe on your phone and get a quick glance of what the weather's gonna be like, I think adds an enhanced layer of uh, safety and predictability to when you're gonna go fly. That MOS, that graphical MOS display is a really cool feature, the Garmin Mach 1, that the D2 Air X10 unfortunately just doesn't have Another cool feature of this watch is the aviation alerts. The D2 Air Extend has a little bit of capabilities to do that, but the Mach 1 just makes it so easy. So as we swipe down here, you can tap on it here and you can set up whatever type of alerts you want. So currently here I have the O2 alert set up for 12.5. So if I get above 12,500 feet, it pops up and it's like, hey, you're above 12,500 feet based off the internal barometric pressure that this watch has uh, native into it. But you can set up other conditions like flight conditions uh, or when a new METAR comes out or a new TAF comes out, it'll actually pop up on your phone and be like, hey, there's new METAR. Uh, not necessarily something you want to do all the time, but if you're sitting around waiting to fly all day uh, and the weather's below mins and you want to know as soon as a new METAR comes up what your destination uh, weather is going to be like as soon as it's changing, it'll pop up as soon as a new METAR comes up and show you like, hey, you got a new METAR out, which is a pretty cool feature as well. A couple other features that you can add on here that you can't necessarily do on the D2 Air X10 is uh, approaching waypoint. So as you're approaching a waypoint, uh, it'll pop up to you and let you know like, hey, you're getting to your next turn point. Crosswinds. Uh, so that's really cool. If you have a crosswind limitation, the crosswinds are really out of limits today. Uh, and you want it to let you know that, hey, the crosswinds are getting really strong uh, without having to look it up constantly, it'll pop up and tell you about that kind of stuff. Density altitude. If you find yourself in a high density altitude area, like I said, you're out of Santa Fe like it was last week, uh, and you want to see like, all right, let me know when the density altitude gets above 8,000 feet. And then it'll pop up and be like, hey, you're at 8,000 feet. Maybe now is not the time to go fly today. Uh, fuel tank reminder is another cool feature. So uh, you can set it to where when you start flying, this watch will automatically start logging your flight plan, which is pretty cool. So once you start uh, climbing out past about 200 feet per minute, then it will automatically start logging your flight time. And then it will also, if you set it up the way that you want it, it'll automatically tell you to swap your fuel tanks every 15, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, however you want to do it. Uh, so you just get a little vibration in your watch. You look at it, it says, hey, swap your fuel tanks. All right, you go swap your fuel tanks. And a great way to back yourself up as a pilot uh, from potentially forgetting that. And there are just an incredible amount of features that you can set up when you're flying. So uh, I'll just go through them real quick. Gust factor changing, the gust factor is changing too much. Maximum wind, maximum ceiling, minimum visibility. Uh, when a new Moss comes out, when a new TAF comes out, when a special METAR comes out, all these things you can set it up to where if one of those things pop up, it'll immediately go to your phone and let you know, hey, uh, this new thing came out, something you may want to pay attention to. So the uh, the aviation alerts, while there are some limited capabilities to that on the D2 Air X10, there's way more of them here on the D2 Mach 1. Like Garmin's other smartwatches, it has the capability of going into different runways and seeing a lot of information from it. So we can see uh, the weather as we've discussed. You can tap on frequencies and see all the different frequencies that that has, uh, departure, approaches, centers, uh, any restrictions that go along with that. You can tap on runway info and it'll give you all the uh, runway information as far as crosswinds uh, that are currently active and all that stuff. And then uh, additionally, you can just click on the airfield information. It'll give you elevation, uh, the bearing and distance to it. So right now I'm 089 uh, bearing at 10.8 nautical miles from uh, my home airport of Bentonville. Uh, it'll tell you what UTC that is, and then whether it has avgas and or jet fuel. So just a lot, a lot of really cool features uh, that you can pick up very natively that you find in other Garmin uh, smartwatches. This has all those, uh, plus a lot more other aviation capabilities. Another cool feature about this is the emergency mode. So if you do find yourself in a bad position, you can uh, hold a button down, it'll automatically activate in emergency mode. And what that gives you is that gives you a uh, best glide speed, and it actually sets a ring on the moving map of your watch to show you what your glide distance should be. So you can very quickly, once you activate that, look down, see what runways are within that glide ring, and realize if you're gonna make that runway or not. If you're gonna make the runway, sweet, you get the warm fuzzy. If you're not, all right, let's start looking for another place to ditch the airplane. Uh, so not an ideal situation, but uh, a great tool to have if you find yourself in that type of an emergency. Uh, so another cool feature about this watch is the actual stealth mode. So if you push this little B2 looking button, uh, what it'll do is it'll actually disconnect all data. So all data to your phone, uh, GPS, everything. Uh, I'm not sure for military guys out there if that's gonna allow you to be able to get into a vault or not, 
Probably not, but uh, if you do for some reason want to go and make sure that there's no data being transmitted in and out, uh, that's a great way to kind of have a, a simple kill switch there uh, for that watch. A cool feature about this is the actual moving map that's on it. Uh, if I just hold this button down here and I say I select uh, the airport, it'll actually pull up this really cool moving map, uh, which you can zoom in, zoom out. You can take a look at different runways, and, uh, and it's just a really cool feature that if you are flying or running or biking or whatever, you're, whatever activity you're doing, you're hiking, uh, you actually have a real-time moving map that shows you uh, where you're at, where you're going. Uh, you, it'll give you breadcrumbs so you can see uh, where you've been. Uh, so if you find, say you're on a hike and you wanna get back from where you came from, uh, you can set up the hiking aspect and, and never get lost again. Uh, that combined with a long battery life, you can go on long hikes, multi-day hikes, have absolutely no problem, or you can fly for a week long, be logging all your flights and not have to worry about recharging your watch, which is a great feature. So with this moving map, uh, like I said, you can use it flying, you can use it hiking or biking or riding or whatever you're doing. Uh, this also has uh, golf courses on it. So if you're a golfer, it has access to like 42,000 different golf courses. Uh, so you can see where you're at, where the pin is, uh, how far away the green is and kind of get yourself some data on that. So if you're into golf, uh, it has some really cool features for that as well. Uh, it makes sense with this being their high-end premium watch. Uh, a lot of people that do that tend to like golfing. Uh, so if that's something you're into, it's a very cool feature that it has. One of the really cool features about this watch is that you can actually download music services to it like Amazon, Pro, Amazon Music or Spotify, and you can download uh, your favorite podcast or your music uh, to your watch. And you can go on, you, know, you can go on a hike or a run or a bike ride or whatever, and it's on your watch, you can Bluetooth it to your headphones so you don't even have to take your phone with you. You can just have your watch, uh, leave your phone at home and you have all the capabilities and functionalities that you can. Uh, so that's really nice when you don't wanna be carrying around a bunch of extra stuff. You can set up uh, notifications on your uh, calendar. So if you get, uh, if you have special events, if you have an important meeting or if it's somebody's birthday, it'll pop up and let you know that as well as if it connects to your phone, now it'll let you know priority notifications. So if you get a new text message, you get an important email, it'll pop up and you can actually swipe through and read a decent amount of it without actually having to open up uh, your phone, which is in your pocket or wherever it's at. So a lot of cool features uh, from there and a good way to kind of stay connected without uh, constantly having to check your phone. All right, so this watch is really meant for kind of the uh, elite pilot or the, the top of the line pilots. Uh, one, it's not only a great looking watch made of super high-end materials that you can wear with uh, a suit and tie uh, and look great wearing it, but it also has a lot of international features as well. So uh, the GPS on it has uh, all three GPS. Uh, so this watch has the uh, GPS, it has GLONASS, uh, and it has the uh, Galileo. So it really has all three GPS systems uh, that it will pull data from. So wherever you're at in the world, you're not gonna have problems uh, getting a good GPS signal. Additionally, this watch internally carries uh, a topographic map of several different continents on it. So if you're in North America or Europe or whatever the case may be, uh, it has a topographic map uh, built within it. So good to know when you're flying uh, where the terrain is. Uh, also good if you're hiking to know what the terrain is. So uh, really, no matter what you're doing, uh, having that uh, multi-continent uh, topographic map, really cool feature that it has in it. All right, so big question, how much does this watch cost? Uh, for comparison, D2 Air X10, great watch, lots of aviation capabilities to it. Uh, comes with a rubber band, it's $550. This one, however, is their premier watch. So titanium, sapphire, Italian leather, uh, this is a this is a high-end watch, uh, and it has a lot more aviation features and capabilities to it. This watch retails for $1,199, and uh, definitely a good present if you are uh, looking for something for yourself to really treat yourself, or you're looking for a graduation gift or something like that. Uh, somebody who wants to splurge a little bit more on a really nice watch, uh, this would be a good watch for you. All right, guys, if y'all enjoyed this, go ahead and make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell icon so you can find out whenever we get new releases. We've got a lot more aviation content coming out. Uh, it's gonna be some really exciting stuff happening. As far as this watch goes, if you have any questions or comments about this watch, things you like about it, things you'd like to see different, uh, questions you have, go ahead and comment below and we'll do our best to try and respond to as many of them as possible. Otherwise, I'll continue to fly safe. We'll see y'all next time.